in terms of the last emerging agent that we have time to discuss uh, today, um, I want to turn our attention uh, to a new formulation of interferon. That's rho peg interferon alpha B. And uh, there have been a couple of studies looking at, at this agent um, recently. Um, but one in particular was the Conti PV study. Do you want to tell us about that, Ruman? Sure. So without question, interferons are very active in myeloproliferative neoplasia. You know, we certainly know interferons were active in chronic myeloid leukemia. They've been superseded, of course, by TKI therapy, but they were active. Uh, interferons in uh, the pH negative MPNs have become a, a big important part of therapy. In some countries, they are actively supported as frontline therapy. There is both short-acting and long-acting interferons with different pegylations. So there's two formulations out there, a pegylated interferon alpha 2A uh, and this, which is a pegylated interferon alpha 2B. So this compound coming out of Taiwan and co-developed uh, from Austria is a ropegylated interferon alpha 2B. It's given every two weeks, uh, and it's a fairly clean drug with pretty much one main isomer represented. So it's a, it's a pretty clean drug. Uh, the groups in Austria have done the leading work, uh, Heinz Gisslinger and other colleagues, uh, regarding showing its activity in polycythemia vera, both in initial studies and then a phase three study. Well, they first demonstrated that through 12 months of time, a group of high-risk patients with PV randomized between hydroxyurea and this ropegylated interferon, that through 12 months, they had been relatively equivalent, which showed that in a randomized way, it was at least as good as hydroxyurea for decreasing risk of thrombotic events, uh, for tolerability, uh, for controlling the counts. The extenuation of that study, the, the Conti PV, was looking further in in time. Indeed, it, the long hypothesis has been that interferons may be more disease-altering over the long haul. Uh, maybe it leads to more remissions. Maybe it helps to better control the genetic burden. Maybe it decreases the allele burden. Maybe it has the ultimate goal we have of decreasing the likelihood of progressing toward myelofibrosis. So the Conti PV data shows that two, at two years, uh, likely the interferon is already superior to the hydroxyurea and achieving complete hematologic response, uh, as well as perhaps controlling the allele burden. So I think you know, longer term data will be of great interest you know, to really see how those two differentiate. Our current guidelines in the US have interferons and hydroxyurea as a, a dealer's choice for clinicians to, to choose. You know, if we have a agent which becomes formally indicated in the US for polycythemia vera, uh, again, there will be that increasing discussion of which patients should that be considered, but certainly the Conti PV data uh, is an important uh, milestone of superiority in a randomized study uh, that uh, may inform that decision. Now, am I, I'm not sure I'm remembering the correct study, but I thought there was an, was it this study when reported earlier that there was no difference between the two? Correct, at 12 months. At so, 12 so months. So this is at 24 months. So it shows the importance of long-term therapy with drugs like interferon. Correct, without question. And, and again, I related to, to some degree, if one was looking at, at two antihypertensive drugs, you know, at one year time, you're gonna be able to read out what was the control of the blood pressure. But as time goes on, you're gonna be able to really read out what was really the difference where there are less myocardial infarctions, where there are less other secondary events that are relevant. So I think over time it will be very important because I think a year probably is really not enough time for us to uh, see the differentiation. So would you say that would be the same with ruxolitinib and PV and myelofibrosis, the early report in, uh, well, for myelofibrosis, right? There's, and in PV, there's some decrease in the allele burden, but it's pretty minimal, but maybe with longer term follow-up we'll see something? I think these are good points uh, to observe over time. Tolerability, any side effects, new side effects, we talked about it, and biological parameters that are in our mind associated with the disease activity or disease progression. The vulnerable fibrosis may be decreasing in patients with mild fibrosis on ruxolitinib. Jack 2 allele burden might be decreasing in PV patients on ruxolitinib. Interferon or OPEG interferon is certainly uh, a new uh, exciting medication here where you give it actually every two weeks. I call it super long acting. Very easy to give every two weeks. 
and uh, much better tolerance than a regular interferon. So you would expect it to be active for much longer and possibly affect the bone marrow, possibly affect the biology of the disease in a true sense that we see less of a progression, less of thrombotic events. Time will tell.